Welcome to Cannabis Investing Newsletter. Today, we're looking at the top 10 most profitable cannabis stocks, but it's not total profitability. It is EBITDA on a per share basis. Some companies are just simply too big compared to others. So I wanted to see if we wanted to get a, a pound for punch, what can we get on a per share basis? EBITDA, of course, is the next to last step until we get to net profitability. A lot of these cannabis stocks are right at zero or just turning to positive. So we're looking at EBITDA profitability on a per share basis, kind of give us a good example as to how each company stacks up. I'm D.H. Taylor. I've been involved in the markets on a professional level for some 30 plus years. Cannabis has been my thing now for a solid four years. I've got about 350 stocks. I'm breaking them down and showing you which ones are a buy and which ones are a bust. And we're looking at the most profitable cannabis stocks. As I said, I've got about 350 that I look at. There's about 135 on my website. That number's going to drop down to about 125, 120. There's been a lot of M&A activity right now. So some of those are going to get uh, scrubbed out. You're going to see a lot of M&A activity this year. Be on the lookout. One of my biggest fears for some of my top picks is that they get picked up before my target price gets hit. Not so bad because sometimes you get picked up by a company that's even better. Let's see. I'm looking at the latest financial data on a quarterly basis. We are only looking at EBITDA profitability per share for this quarter. Like I said, the EBITDA profitability. And it is not 10 companies. Unfortunately, I lied. It's 11. The reason why it's 11, I was working with two different spreadsheets, one on my computer, another one on my website itself internally, and the numbers weren't driving. Number 10 and number 11 kept flip-flopping, and then I realized that they came in at a solid tie. And because that number 11 is actually one of my top picks, I had to include it. So first off, what is EBITDA? Let's keep this less than 60 seconds. Earnings before, interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. All right. So there are basically three areas of a financial statement. You've got your uh, revenue section, then you've got your operation section, and then you've got the third section where EBITDA comes in. So on the very first thing we look at is what are the total revenues? From total revenues, we're going to get gross margins and gross profits. Basically, you sell a product for one thing, you get a certain amount for that product, you keep a certain amount, the rest goes to cost. The next area is operating expenses. And total operation costs, how much does it cost to actually run the back office, SG&A? How much is the rent on the building? What's the CEO making? These are things that are inside operating costs that have nothing to do with actually putting the widget together. From that, you get your operating expenses and total operating profits. This is where EBITDA kind of comes in. It is after these two things before net profitability. EBITDA is a huge deal because we can kind of compare two companies. If you're looking at company A versus company B and they've got, say, different debt levels, EBITDA, I, interest, that's where that's going to come out. So if you're looking at apples and oranges comparing two companies, looking at EBITDA gets you an idea as to how this company may outperform the next one. But then you need to look at interest, depreciation, and other things, variability inside there to determine who's going to get where. EBITDA, very first step towards net profitability. So it becomes important for all these companies that are just turning EBITDA profitable right now. Let's look at some companies. Number 10 slash 0.5, Merrimed. Symbol MRMD. They came in with 8.6 million EBITDA. That gave them a solid 3 cents per share EBITDA profitability. Now, here's a look at what their, their 
EBITDA looks like. We see some steady increases. About five quarters ago, they had a they had a solid write down. Really cracked it hard. Down 33.4 million. Other than that, over the past several quarters, they've been hitting a bit of profitability and it continues to increase quarter over quarter. The next step, net profitability, we're not really going to focus on that right now. We're just comparing EBITDA. Now, when I looked at the charts this morning, there was a lot of red. And as I was putting this together, I saw some of these reds turn green. I didn't want to have to kind of redo my work over and over again. Nonetheless, I see a lot of selling happening in the cannabis stocks. I, I've been saying this. If you've been one of my followers, you know where my top picks are and where my entry points are. We're getting real close to these entry points. I've not told anybody to buy anything yet. I'm still looking for these stocks to move forward or lower. Merrimed is one of those that if I could, I'd pick up right around 50 cents. The next stock. Like I said, this is still number 10.5, if we will. Depends on which one of my spreadsheets you're looking at. C21, love this company. Waiting desperately for them to release their next quarterly earnings so I can put a chart up on the uh, video and uh, analysis up on my website. Their symbol, CC, CXXIF, came in with 3.5 million EBITDA. And again, the tie, 3 cents EBITDA per share. Their numbers, similar to Merrimed over the past several quarters, consistently moving higher and higher, looking for them to bust above four, maybe even hit five million this quarter. That would be solid. Unfortunately, and this is the one that really kind of made me look this morning, today's activity, solid selling. As it turns out, I looked at this chart just five minutes after I uh printed this up and it was already green. So I'm not sure where this is going to end up for the day. I'm looking to get into C21 roughly around 60 cents. So I almost got triggered. I think I might even have a trigger at 80. Unfortunately, I've been so busy with other things. I don't even know where my prices are. I have to actually look at my uh, statements inside my brokerage to find out where these things are. Nonetheless, I do see this company moving much higher over a longer period of time. So all this selling, merely a buying opportunity. And all the selling is being driven by these terrible companies, Canopy Growth, Kronos, Aurora, the usual suspects, way overvalued based upon what they can actually produce. And yet I still get so many people desperately telling me that these stocks are going up. Yeah, all I see are stocks going down. Good luck. Next up, we've got one of my favorite companies, Harborside, they're starting to get there with a lot of variables. They are a dispensary up in the San Francisco area. And maybe that's why it's one of my favorite companies. Uh, it has more to do with where they are than what they've been able to do. And yet they're able to still pull off some metrics. They're number nine on this list, so you can't bag them too much. HBORF is their symbol. They printed 1.5 million EBITDA. That gave them a five cent EBITDA per share. Now this company, they've got, I think five dispensaries. Four of them are up in the Bay Area, one right in Berkeley, one right in um, uh, Haight-Ashbury. I can't remember exactly where they are. Nonetheless, this is sort of ground zero for liberalism in an area where you, every one of us knows very well that there's a lot of cannabis smoked in San Francisco, my hometown. So they've got their grow facility all the way down south in um, Coachella Valley, producing some great quality. This is a company that I absolutely expect will get acquired simply because they're so condensed in such a high pop density population area and they are hitting some numbers. With Harborside, we are starting to see some consistency I like dispensaries a lot. Gross margins, you can keep them real consistent. You, you're dealing with a consistent rent. You're dealing with a consistent volume. You know what you're getting on a Friday night for a customer base. You know what you're getting on a Monday morning for a customer base. So dispensaries, they kind of have grown on me in that sense because you do get so much consistency. Harborside being focused on their five uh 
dispensaries, we're probably going to see a lot more consistency here. Let's see if we can break above two in the next quarter. Again, a little bit of selling today in this particular stock. I, I look at this as a, as a potential long-term buy, so any of this dip is, to me, an opportunity. I think I've got price points at a buck and a buck 20 to pick up, maybe even a buck 40. It looks like we might hit this in the next, say, six weeks. Number eight. Here's one you've probably heard of, Cureleaf. C-U-R-L-F here in the United States printed a whopping 43.3 million EBITDA on a per share basis. That was seven cents. That's what got them to number eight. You're going to see in this chart, in this listing I've got here, a few names you've heard of and two or three that you haven't that you need to keep your eye on. I know you're keeping an eye on Cureleaf. They're going to be a powerhouse company. I think we're all looking for towards them as a leadership role, kind of differentiate themselves from Canopy Garbage, Aurora, and all those other companies who just went in big and then failed. Cure Leaf, doing it right. Printing the EBITDA. Look at this. That's not even, 43.3 million isn't even their best quarter. So hopefully the next quarter, we see them eclipse their previous high and continue forward. Nonetheless, Guilt by association, this stock still looking to come down. I have projections up around, say, $25 to $35 over the course of the next 12 to 18 months for this stock. So any movements down lower, say we hit $10 to $12, you got to be kidding me. On a company, a stock doing as well as this company is, that's a buy all day. Number seven, big shout out to these guys, GTEC Holdings. They're really hitting it. GGTTF is their symbol here in the United States. They printed a small amount, 900K. And mind you, Cureleaf just printed 43.3 million. They're at number eight. Uh, eight. So at 900K, you kind of ask the question, why? how does this happen? This is because I'm doing a per share basis. And this is the beauty behind it. You're only buying one share at a time, 100 shares or whatever. You're not buying the entire EBITDA. You're buying it on a per share basis. So GTEC takes out one of the leaders in the industry by hitting number seven. They are at nine cents earnings per share. And as it turns out, they're starting to get pretty consistent as well. Probably going to top one million EBITDA over the next maybe quarter or two and then keep going from there as long as they continue with the success they've been having. As it turns out, their stock, people are starting to pay attention. Back at 10 cents, you're kidding me. That would have been an amazing buy. Unfortunately, now that opportunity is gone, but we're still seeing some selling. Any kind of selling in GTEC, I'm looking at that as a buy. Number six, you've heard of this guy, Cresco Labs, CRLBF, they printed just like Cureleaf, a nice number, 41.8 million EBITDA. But on a per share basis, Cresco Labs blows away Cureleaf, 18 cents versus the seven cents before. Their, their numbers, again, once again, not even the best EBITDA being pro, um, priced. They We should see probably 50 get topped out over the next, say, quarter or two. If Cresco Labs continues to increase the way they've been doing and continues to acquire some of the companies they've been looking at, I absolutely see this one being a standout. But then again, the guilt by association. Their stock, just like everybody else today, getting hit. I look at, again, I look at all the selling we're seeing now. You should be lining up what are your favorite companies and when can you get into them? Cure Leaf absolutely must be on your list. Same with the others on, that I've been going through. All right, number five, one of my favorite companies, TerraSend. TRSSF on the uh, uh, OTC market down here, printed 20.6 million EBITDA on a per share basis. That's 26 cents. They are starting to get real consistent and are really starting to power through, you're seeing some significant growth. That's about a 50% quarter over quarter growth on EBITDA from last quarter to the, what they just printed. 
If they did that again, you'd be sitting at 30 million EBITDA. This stock would take off. Tarasen, of course, starting to see some sliding from the February highs. I look at this once again as a buying opportunity. Tarasen is one of my favorite stocks. I am looking to get into this thing. Probably looking as low as five to seven fifty to get in. I know a lot of people are like, "This is crazy." Some of the prices you come up with. Listen, I just got. Uh, I had one stock. I think it was high tide. I had a, a price point, an entry point that everybody doubted would happen. It hit on Friday, and it was about forty percent lower than that current price. So yeah, I do see Citarisen coming down significantly a lot with the other stocks merely because a lot of people were exiting these other stocks that should not have been valued so much. Terrasen can offer you an opportunity you can't pass up. Number four, here's one I really had to dig in to find. Gaia. These guys are focused on hemp and CBD. So it's kind of not exactly the wheelhouse I'm looking for, although nonetheless it is a uh, cannabis based company. They're more industrial with their hemp and then they also doing the CBD. I've never been a big fan of CBD. Do yourself a, a solid look at, do a search on eBay and find out how many CBD products pop up. It's something like five to 6,000. You don't really get a lot of differentiation, but these guys are not necessarily focused on the, uh, on the product per se as they are selling on a wholesale basis. So they're selling to all these people, all these other companies, all the five to 6,000 brands that are trying to establish themselves. Nonetheless, Gaia, they're hitting some solid numbers. I'm going to be breaking these guys down here real soon. GAIA is their symbol. A bit to profitability, 3.5 million for the quarter. This got them up to 27 cents EBITDA per share. And as we can see, you're starting to see some consistency here. Past three quarters, if we continue to see this kind of consistency, maybe we get up to about four over the next maybe quarter, two quarters. That's just going to get closer and closer to that net profitability, which is going to drive this stock. The stock itself been kind of flat. They did participate in February's little kind of moves, if you will. Uh, they did so late. They didn't really take off until March, and then they basically came right back down. I do, I'm going to be looking at this company, like I said, I do see them moving forward with their products. The hemp thing is interesting. They are up in British Columbia. They do contract growth growing on fields throughout the uh, region up there. They've got a shorter region, so they, they get a lot of pound for their pack, but they're not spending a lot of money getting the actual land. Instead, what they're doing is that contract growing. That helps keeping their bottom line down as much as possible. We'll see what happens. Like I said, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take a serious look at this company. They're all the way up to number three. Number three itself, solid company, Green Thumb Industries. GTBIF is the symbol, 61.3 million EBITDA profitability. That got them all the way up to 33 cents earnings per share. The thing I like the most, look at this consistency. It is just growing and growing and growing. This is indicative of what cannabis can do. These stocks, again, EBITDA profitability is the first step to net profitability when you're looking at it like this. So sequentially, we're going to continue to see Green Thumb producing solid EBITDA growth, and that translates into solid net earnings growth, which of course translates into solid stock growth. Still, a lot of these char charts we're looking at, if you overlaid them, they are so similar over and over and over again. The charts are so similar. They're all kind of moving in concert. But you will notice one thing, Aurora, CGC, they're not in this list at all. Take a look at my website. You'll find them way down at the bottom, way down at the bottom. But those are the headline stocks that the hedge funds get into because they think, well, they've got 
They were given $4 billion. Yeah, they only have like $1.3 billion left. That's canopy growth I'm talking about. And what have they done with that? Lost money. Green thumb, making money. Number two, here's a company you I'm betting you never heard of. Plant-based investments, symbol CWWBF, plant printed a solid 9.5 million EBITDA. Now that was solid for them. It put them in the number two spot. Unfortunately, they're not 100% consistent yet. So although they've made the number two slot and they're going to be on my radar in a big way simply because of where they are in this video, I'm not going to be digging deep into them thinking that this is an opportunity of a lifetime I want to see consistency and I'm going to show you the EBITDA chart. Of course, that's where they're missing. And there are some other metrics. It's like, well, I'll keep an eye on you. Nonetheless, I need to see a little more consistency with this company. They did print 35 cents earnings per share. And here is their EBITDA. Like I said, uh, consistency is a big thing for me. If you, if we looked at say Terrasend, if we looked at Green Thumb Industries, we can reasonably assume what is going to happen next based on previous consistency. With plant-based investments, not quite there on their EBITDA level. Give me a couple more quarters at these levels, then I'll be convinced. And as it turns out, the stock market isn't exactly overwhelmed by this company. Moved up somewhat throughout January from about 25 cents all the way up to about 75 cents. So that's about a 200% move upwards. Had you participated in that, great, awesome. I'm not going to be looking to buy this stock anytime soon, but it is definitely on my radar simply because they're in the number two slot here in this video. Then we've got number one. I'm certain you've heard of this company, Trulief, TCNNF. Blew it away. 123 million EBITDA. The thing is, number two slot was 35 cents. These guys, a buck four. Just blew everybody away. They were so far ahead, it's not even funny. That is, what, 300% higher? Here's their chart on EBITDA over the past, what, two and a half years? Outside of one quarter where they had to write things down, these guys have been nailing it consistently. And I expect this number is going to be blown away simply because of some of the acquisitions they've been doing, a lot of the maneuvers they've been doing. True Leave is definitely going to be an industry leader. You need to have this company all over your radar. But that doesn't necessarily mean you need to buy today. Like every other cannabis stock, I believe this one is going to come down. I would be interested in buying this stock between $20 and, say, $30. It's trading just below $40. So, yes, I just said this thing is going to fall some, what, 50%, 25% to 50%. Patience is the name of the game. If you wait patiently, you're going to get into some excellent companies as they move lower, start lining up what you're going to be purchasing. I've been saying these same things for months now. These valuations are out of line. All these stocks are going to come down. And everybody's been turning and saying, hey, I thought this was going to go up. I never told anybody to buy any of these stocks. I said to wait. Over the past several months, two, three months, I've been like, listen, wait. All these stocks are going to come down. You're going to get a better buying opportunity. This is a stock I absolutely believe over the course of the years is going to perform extremely well. But be patient. You're going to be offered an opportunity with this stock by Mr. Market that's going to be unbelievable. If you like my content, subscribe. I've got a free email newsletter. I'll send you the email on a daily basis with these videos, links to the videos and things like that. Get that free email. If you're interested, Monthly subscription is $5, gets you full access to my website. As it is right now, I've just changed things over the weekend. You get one article analysis per week. I know some of you guys are only interested in one stock, so I only write up about that one stock on, say, a quarterly basis. Why would you want to pay 5 bucks? I totally get that. Nonetheless, 
for the rest of you who are hitting the site on a regular basis, reading my analysis, it is now a $5 monthly ex a subscription. I appreciate you stopping by. I ask that you support the effort here. I'm going to continue to work through all these hundreds of cannabis stocks and let you guys know which ones are the best. Nonetheless, I want to say thanks for stopping by Cannabis Investing Newsletter. I'm D.H. Taylor. We'll see you in the next video.